So first, before we start, let me uh, just mention uh, another uh, nice donation from Edward Essing. Thank you, Edward, very much. And uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, um, keep um, keep it coming in, folks. Much appreciated. Uh, we we still haven't paid for the first 190 of these or 100 whatever we're up to 88. So um, and if they're helping you, uh, any help from you would be great. So thank you. Um, <laughs> I remember being, I remember being a kid in in uh, in, a, in Protestant churches and having the um, pastor talk about giving a donation, and I feel <laughs> every once in a while I feel first of first of all I'm a preacher, I'm not thinking of myself as a preacher, and secondly now I am asking for a donation. <laughs> what a world! Um, yeah, the internet has changed all that, hasn't it? Uh, and uh, certainly made it. Uh, with the numbers you can reach, made it a more viable thing to uh, to to um, to do that give and take, uh, and to you know and to receive enough to actually get a benefit. So, anyway, thank you for all that you've all of you that have done that, and and thank you, uh, Mr. Essing, very much. All right, um, you know, it's um, the impressionist thing, you know, and. Um, we're talking about that ability to see the visual impression, to think in terms of the elements that make up the visual impression as being the bulwark of our, of our uh, art form, of our representational form. I say we, uh, I think by the time you get to Sargent, it's a we, it's a very common we, almost nobody went back to another form which is knowledge-based and so on. Uh, and uh, so I wonder, I had an experience the other night, I was looking outside, and I'll show you this image, this is not it. <laughs> this is one from a previous time, but I was looking outside in the dark, and I looked up, and that night, last night, a couple nights ago, was a really glorious, gloriously clear sky with spots of stars all over the place, and, um, and, um, and then they trickled down and actually were in the trees and in the woods, which is, of course, would be my neighbor's homes. You know, the lights of the porch or the lights of the window or something like that that would show up down below. You can rather see a little bit of that idea here, although this isn't worked up. And by the way, these images are never very good. Uh, the dark on here, for example, is a solid dark and doesn't have all those light flecks in the bottom and so on. So it's, <laughs> it's there's also, secondly, with apologies, this, this thing's been sitting around for a very long time. It's full of dust. So I felt like it was useful to show you anyway. But I was looking out there at a scene rather like this. And you know how difficult it is to see the edges of things and the objects and all that sort of stuff. You can't do it. And so you're not inclined to do it. You're inclined to look a little bit differently. So how would you look? What would you be doing? Because you can't zoom in. Nobody even with good eyes can zoom in and, and get data, right? There's no that much use here in understanding trees to make an impression like that, right? And so it occurred to me just at the moment I was, I was standing there watching it and I was... I was I was suddenly pulled back, which is what happens all the time routinely when you have a difficulty with something seen in front of you. You just simply quiet down. And you'll find yourself listening. And what will you be listening to? You won't be working hard and zooming in and trying to find you know, the, the anatomy of trees. You'll just be noticing. You'll be noticing color values in relation to each other. You'll be noticing, there'll be a general sense of the thing. But what it is, is you just sit there, and I found myself, of course, doing that because I'm so used to doing it, and you just sit there and register. You just register with a wondering eye, if you want to call it that. You know, not going with that naive eye is, and the innocent eye is the wondering eye, isn't it? <laughs> the child's wondering eye. So, and I often say, you know, think of yourself as a Martian who's never seen a human, and they, aren't, they don't have legs and eyes, they just have eyes. <laughs> so all they get to see and register and send back uh, to, their, to Mars is the, uh, is the image. Right, that's the impressionist <laughs> image. So they just what well, they're going to send back. And um, it's, but anyway, this is the this is the uh, fundamental thing about what we're talking about that you have to be able to register uh, the uh, what you see in front of you in purely impressionist terms, color values, sizes, locations, edges, transition, you know, value movements. Like the sky in here was moving, uh, appeared to be a little bit lighter on the horizon. You can probably see that. I'm trying to figure out why I don't have an arrow. All right, now I have an arrow. <clears throat> and this really does show a disadvantage because 
when you shoot with a camera, no matter how dim I make this thing, the camera picks up way more stuff than you can see. And by the way, this is a much smaller image, maybe about this big or so. But, you know, it is, it is uh, uh, pastel sanded, pastel bored with, a, with charcoal. Anyway, you can see that I appeared to have picked up the idea that it was darker here and getting lighter there. You can see things like that, right? But we aren't saying the word sky. We're not saying anything. We're just registering the value relationships. I appear to have picked up a warm to cooler quality in this, uh, even in the tree masses here. And then beyond that, it's just a question of memorizing the, uh, well, in my version of this was red, yellow, and blue is uh, the lights stood for the yellow. It doesn't mean they were actually yellow. This one was though. And the, and the night I was looking at, the sky uh, stars were really, really um, uh, something beyond yellow, but, but they stood for the yellow very easily. They were not blue or red. They felt more yellow than the other two notes. But the tree felt more red <clears throat> and the sky behind it felt more blue. So I'm not trying to go through this whole thing as if I was showing you memory drawing again, as much as I realized that all I could do to, re to, 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 mem to, to, to memorize this, to take it in with me, was to register it with, a, with an unpolluted mind, with a, with a thoughtless mind, okay? Uh, you know, what do they call that, the unknowing? <laughs> There's so many phrases that fit this. Uh, some, some people want to think of it as the Zen moment. Uh, but uh, I'm showing you some other images here just before I get deeper into this and showing you that I do this stuff with a lot of different things. So none of these, of course, are very, very good images. This is a tile of sorts with uh, these things. I just, I use double stick tape and I just stick these on here so I can look at them from time to time uh, side by side and see how I'm doing, see what I'm doing and just, just so I can be looking at them from time to time. Um, but you can see some of them are pretty tiny. This is a cloud, a end of day cloud formation, a couple bright ones and a couple dark ones and a, and a, and a hilltop against a, a uh, more green sky. So, but you know, that's, that's what I do for memory studies. And these, as I said, are very tiny things because I'm just trying to register the majors. I'm not into memorizing a lot of little things in these exercises. But uh, I want to consider this uh, conversation today a little bit of an impressionist primer. And I know you know what I mean, but I'm separating these things in, in some, of these, some of these ideas in more isolated videos so you can look at them separately. I mention them all the time. I refer to bits and pieces of them. So you'd probably have to, to look at everything I've done to really get your head around all this stuff. But this, this thing, what happens is, is that when, 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 when everything else fails, the one thing we know for sure is that we need the color and value of the phenomena in front of us. We need to be able to see that with objectivity. We have to be able to see that without, without presumptions and loading our own stuff into it. We need to be able to see it fresh and clean and objectively. So that inquires, I mean, sorry, that requires you to, 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 to um, uh, well, let me say something else, by the way. You know, I, I often get outside, like I was saying about that tree group last night, I stood out there and I thought to myself, how? I wonder how I would do this. I felt, I always feel slightly overwhelmed by nature. And I'm, I'm hoping you do too, <laughs> because I'm not sure you're being realistic if you're not. Nature is so full of a number of things, you know. <laughs> And, um, but I, I look at them and I begin to wonder how I'm going to ever draw this thing or, or articulate this thing is a better word and, uh, draw it forth might be an okay one. And I look at it and I look at it and look at it and immediately at some point, immediately I go into that zone that I call the impression of zone and you stop thinking you know anything and you just begin to listen. And all you have to listen to is values, colors, and what they do where they meet, or if you have colors and values doing transitions that sort of those speed of those transitions, you know, you can memorize things like you can learn things like that. That's kind of stuff that your eye is going to be full of. You just say, oh, oh, look at that moving like this. And so it becomes a question of, okay, so you wonder how, but you're sitting there looking and just registering, just letting it register with your eyes, just letting it register, letting it register, letting it register. No knowledge, nothing like that. And then, and then you say, and what is it doing? And what does that mean, right? But this is the impressionist eye, the impressionist mind. The impressionist mind just wants to know what's out there and then what is it doing. And I'm going to walk you through some pictures with that in mind, okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's just do this. I'm looking at Vermeer. Can we look at a Vermeer with an impressionist eye, right? Now, you can look at this Vermeer with me for a second or two, and if you look at it with your regular eyes, you're going to see people and tile floor and instrument, windows, walls, pictures on walls. 
and uh, a table with with uh, light lit objects on it. But if you look at this with an impressionist eye, which is, by the way, what uh, uh, what you want to do if you want to actually register just the data and not the not not the object, you're going to register this. You're going to look at it differently. First thing you're going to do is say close one eye, maybe close a second eye. I <laughs> said close one eye almost all the way down. The other one will sort of start drawing down, but keep looking at it in that way, and 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 it's taking the thing as a whole, only the thing as a whole, right? And you'll begin noticing things, right? Abstract things. You'll start noticing, say, the whites, and the summer, some summer, 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 different values. Like there's a bright one over on the right, and there's a there's a bluer one down on the bottom there that's darker, and up in the windows a more blue one, a little bit lighter, and then the wall there behind is is a beige. You'll notice things like that, right? And you don't want to know what, it's not the color of the objects we're talking about, right? It's just the color. So those are the whites and they're doing color play, right? And you're watching and you're seeing that and you're thinking, by the way, at a certain point, you know you can you can take that upstairs and just draw, hit those notes together, the set of the whites. It's not difficult to do. It's the only reason even that, that those color studies I do are uh, as good as they are. But, you know, another thing you'll notice is say the yellows. You'll see this group here and this group here. You'll see this and this and this. Let's just say, because that's just the stuff of the visual world. It's not objects. It's not beams of ceilings. You don't have to understand anything in that, uh, uh, anything about, an, about, about the anatomy of ceilings, shall we say. But you'll start registering, oh, the most chromatic one. And it's got a, a, a sort of a green tendency compared to the, the, the next or the most lit one, which seems to be this one, but it's slightly warmer. And I'm seeing these two in relation to each other. You notice how you can't see them except you see them as a, as a group, right? You see them in relation, you start seeing. And so perhaps this is the darkest, but it's very similar to certain aspects of this one. And, uh, and this is probably the, 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 the uh, this, this is one of the more chromatic ones floating around up here. But you just see that and not be saying of something. You don't want to look at it and look in to see what color it is. Just don't look hard at it. Look easy. And you'll even notice this mud, this could be considered one of the yellows, just in the way this thing interprets right now, by the way. I can't tell you. I can't vouch for the painting. Uh, what is that? Is that a yellow? We don't know. But I think a lot of these, the darks often get messed with. Uh, so do the reds, for that matter. By the way, no, notice the beauty of the reds. Look at the play of reds. Just stop thinking about it. Just look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's a ride, right? It's good from the, from the darker and the more blue into the getting warmer and then getting it. It's just coming right up into the light. And if you keep your eyes popping, you might notice a few other sort of semi-reds floating around that are sort of p playing roles, aren't they? Well, that's that's what we see. That's that's the game. And so the question is, can you register those guys and get them all get them in play? And so the, the impressionist mind is get them in play, not as objects, just them for what they are. And the uh, and so the same thing would be true of the dark. Say this dark and this dark and this dark, and say you say the darks. I mean, these blacks actually really do stand out. And if you take them in, and it's, again, don't open your eyes to see this. I mean, you could pop your eyes as long as you pop your eyes, so the and, and make sure you don't see objects and just the effects. The popped eye is a good idea because you maintain your color life, right? And uh, but if you blur, you can you can lose some of that, and so the color play won't be as important, but it won't be as effective, won't be as strong, as well expressed, well seen. <laughs> So, um, but again, if you're going to look at this thing, can you look at it with that naive eye and just know that it's just colors and values and locations and what happens where they meet, right? So there's a series where they meet. There's a series of effects, right? See these effects? These are, these are what we call contrast. But these contrasts are themselves a game. So what are they doing together, right? So we see that this one possibly is the most, most uh, the, you know, the most most toward our eye, or perhaps this one is jumping toward our eye the most, and you'll see there's a there's rather an order to the to the contrast and the way they come to our eye. It's much the same as just everything else we see out there. You can say the same thing as as uh, with with angles, right? What is this angle? Well, you'll notice when you're taking that thing and just with a naive eye as angles, you'll see other angles playing to it, right? You'll see this and this and this and and this. That's why an impressionist doesn't really have to understand. Uh, perspective, he, but he really has to be good at angle relationships if he doesn't, okay? And, and to be consistent with himself, that's the way he wants to play. And then, and then you, you know, there's nothing wrong with checking out to see how you did, to see what you might have faked yourself out with, with your perspective laws, which are pretty, pretty binding by using the perspective laws, by referring back to them. So, uh, and so look at the um, bunker here with the same thing in mind, right? This is actually painted considerably more impressionistically from the beginning, right? 
And uh, one of the nice things about an impressionist painting is you don't have to finish it to have the order. When you have the order, you only have the chroma order and the value order, and the size order of major masses. It's impressive how, how magnificent that already is, how much you've said about the beauty of what's in front of you before it becomes the object. And this is a huge advantage to you because if you haven't exhausted yourself, <laughs> it's not difficult to bring that le next level of drawing, which you can see is happening, say, in here with, um, with Bunker. But, uh, but what you see here is he's obviously looked at as dark mass. He sees in, in the abstract, just sees these darks playing to each other, I mean, especially the ones that spot. You can call them dark spots or just darks, but this one appears to be the darkest. Dark is his interpretation of it. <clears throat> And, and you can see there's a step down from that dark here to this dark here to these darks here, right? You can see there's a, there's a general step down of these major masses. And you'll just register that. It's just what I'm saying. I'm using the word register. Visually see it and register it, all right? So that's, you see it, you register it. Now, you got to see what I'm talking about, though. What we're seeing is not the object. It's the value. It's the color. It's whatever. But you just see it, and then you... And then you and then you uh, register. So what's happening if you're talking, talk, looking at this? And you have to you have to think about them in categories, right? You can register in general terms, but you actually need to have enough information to go up there and make a spot in a particular place. So you also need to, for example, when you look at this darker one, you realize that it goes from here to here. You realize this is the red of those three greens, or those three darks. This is the red green one. This is the blue, if if you want to call it a blue. And this is the, shall we say, yellow green, right? We can see the difference in the color play. Once you've registered that, you, you own it. Register means bring it to your consciousness, right? Become, become, become consciously aware of that thing it's doing. You see where I'm going with all this stuff? I, you know, I know of no other way to do this, and I've, I'm only experimenting with you all, but, um, you, you know, in terms of trying to explicate it uh, in verbal ways, which painters... <laughs> possibly have done better than in writing. They, it's very difficult, to do, much more difficult to do in writing uh, in, in certain aspects of it are. Anyway, you can see the same thing as a play in these reds, for example, in the play of these three reds and, and any other minor reds, what, what things we can think of as also possibly reds. And, uh, but you can find any old set you want. And that's why I recommend going outdoors and doing, doing just memorizing the three major notes when you see a beautiful effect in the sky. The land, something, and you know the sky and the cloud, something, whatever. You see what I'm doing. Uh, look at my memory uh, studies um, on one of these videos. I should tell you which one. I, <laughs> my producer will chase me down. Uh, you wonder what to do with some of these things here, but then if you pop your eyes really big, you'll see that these, some of these things have to do with two things, right? This this note here, these reds. Here you go from here to here to here, right? The sleepiest, perhaps the lightest of the reds the next step up in the middle tone reds, and then this is not much different in value, so it's not a dark, but it's the richest of the reds. So you can see a neutrality to a less neutral. Now register that. Look at that and register. Just register the set, okay? This is what I'm trying to encourage you to do and how to think. You consider our thinking is not the same thing as the thinking of a uh, of a uh, uh, of a uh, an object painter who's always worrying about what color is the, are the steps, what color is the wall. By the way, speaking of the steps there, you can see there's a blue here, and there's blue here, very decisive blue here, and lesser ones, warmer ones. But there's a set of blues. You can plainly see that is the set of the blues. And then you can see influences of blue all through here picking up in certain of these passages and other places as well. But you follow where I'm going. I'm just talking about the colors. I'm just talking about registering these guys as color values in relation to each other. So of these three blues, you can see this one appears to be the richest. This probably, possibly the next, maybe that one and then come back. But anyway, you want to register them all three at once or you won't be able to easily tell which is the most chromatic. So now the more I do that, as I, as I <laughs> tell you to, it's possible this is the most chromatic of the blues. But what, I didn't even look up here. So, But anyway, get them all in your eye at once. And don't consider, I'm doing this fast on a, on a video, so don't consider that this is a problem. This shouldn't take long, but you got to go through the process step by step. You have to look impressionistically. So in other words, drop what you know, don't look in, and just take in the whole and just let it register. Let some, some relationship register with you, right? And remember, it's all relationships. It's all relational. Uh, yeah, so I don't really need to say much more. This is uh, Carlos Duran uh, doing his thing. And um, uh, it's the, from, you know, from this point forward, most people are trying to do this idea of registering. 
of putting notes down and registering, getting right in relation to each other and, and working drawing with it. Well, Carolus was still doing lines, doing lines around shapes, we know that. But one of the, one of the uh, 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 conversations, um, what would you call that? One of the, one of the observations about a, from a, a sergeant demonstration was how <clears throat> he spotted notes around and brought them together. I don't know how many lines he had, but in all cases, that would be our job to get this value to this value to this value here to this value here, right? And then, and, and, and in this case here, again, you'll see the sets of the notes. You'll see one of the things you're going to memorize, one of the things you're going to be able to register is major transitions, like this thing going from warmer back here to greener, lighter here. You know, it's a both and, both color shift and value shift. Um, and by the way, you'll know you're getting the, those value shifts right when it looks like that form that you see, like the, uh, like the roundness of the neck will show up when the value to value and that movement is right, right? But uh, yeah, and, and of course, you, we're talking about the spotting around of the reds, but just any set that looks like it belongs together, you'll be able to tell better what actual note is, how this note is different from this note, and what parts of it actually relate to what parts of those notes. You can see those things. Uh, you can register those things, and once they're registered, once you've seen them, and without looking hard in again, being standing inside, standing, standing outside the picture, taking in the whole, once you've registered those things in relation to each other, you can just close your eye for a second and you'll see that you own them forever. So that's the, uh, that's the model that uh, is, is presumptive, right, for the Impressionist, that you are going to see a color, register the, what it's doing in relation to other notes, and then go up to your canvas and try to articulate what you registered. And then again, the requirement is to get back and see if you actually got that. Now, when I do these studies at night, of course, I can't get back and <laughs> I can't even do the studies till the morning when I have good light. I don't do that in artificial light, so I thought I couldn't. But, um, but, the, uh, but the fact is I can't. But when you guys are doing something like, say, from some nature, you can put down three notes, you can stand back and see how you did. With the, are they registering as a group? And if you can just avoid the idea of looking into one spot, which is what the damning thing about sight size is, if you can stop doing that, don't do that ever again, <laughs> you'll be able to see whether your set is true, right? And every set incorporates in multiple other sets, like, like you could say the skin tone, the skin color is a set. But these reds incorporate, they're part of a red set. The whole red set, is part, the fingertips are part of the red set. Uh, and uh, so if you can register that idea, then you'll find that, say, the greens here will be, the, the, their accuracy of them will be related to this green here. What you see happening here might be, looks like here in this picture, it's almost literally the same. But, but that's what's going to happen. And, and, and when you're in looking at this one, you'll be looking at it as part of a value set. So if, if, if every note is right in the multiple sets that it relates to, you can't be wrong. And what sounds like you're doing a it sounds like you're doing a chore. And in a sense, I remember when I first did this, I felt like a chore. But I just knew that if I treated myself just like a dog and just did that until it was automatic, then it would be natural for me to just, you know, I, I think of it as taking out the trash. But, you know, if, if I just let myself fight through the part where I'm fighting it and just do it every time, register this to this, that to that, you know, and, and multiples and to the whole, uh, then pretty soon that's all you do. And, pretty, and you wonder what you're fighting about, what you're fussing about. Your body does that for you, right? You don't have to be thinking about it after you get good at it. But you have to notice in your conscious brain whether you're actually doing it or not. And that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? So I show you this, uh, Benson, just to have some Boston School conversation here, which is the point of our exercise, isn't it? And um, this is getting way longer than I thought it would. Um, but you can see what he's done here. You can see that, for example, if you're just looking at this note, you can see what you might call, the, this is the yellow, right? I just take the obvious, most obvious color, and I say the red, yellow, blue, what are they doing? So this is the yellow. You might argue turning into the red, and then you see the distribution of certain reds around here in different ways, right? You see the distribution of these reds coming out of that yellow, and then the whole mass of the rest of this stuff takes on that blue quality. Well, you should be able to sit there and register that, right? And you should be able to express that in a little square, a little tiny square like that. This is a major, the, 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 the um, system, you, if you're doing it, you'll want to notice out of the corner of your eye, out of the corner of your mind, if you want to say that, what's the darkest dark and the lightest light? You need to do that anyway when you're working on a picture. It doesn't automatically mean it's black. In this picture, I have no idea how dark this picture is. It doesn't seem like it's possible for it to be this dark. Cameras are amazing, little liars, aren't they? <laughs> But um, anyway, but you can see that if you're laying a painting our way then, 
You won't be into little details early. You'll be into the getting the relationship to these major masses right. That's your first job. And uh, then, then, then you'll be bringing together the primary, the first, the first effects, the first effects, and getting them playing to each other as a set. And that, again, we're talking about effects now. Remember, effects, meaning some spot that pops, with, that glows with light. You can see this light to this light to this light. And you can see an edge to an edge. And if you have it to another edge, uh, you can see those as a set in themselves. And if you, you got to learn to see those contrast sets in relation to each other as well. Okay. Now, what are we saying? We're just saying that, look, the only way you can manage nature is to recognize it's just colors and values and what they do where they meet. So can you learn that? Can you, can you look at nature and see what that's doing and put those down? And what makes us who we are is that we then draw with those notes. Okay. Now, I don't know if that's adequate, but I would think of that as rather a, an impressionist uh, primer. Uh, and of course, it's through the lens of Paul Ingbrecht. It's the, it's the lens of the guy who's been working it. And we all have our own little twists and takes on that. You know, um, I see I'm not the same as, as in a number of ways as the, as the Meldrum model, and I'm not the same as the, as the uh, uh, Monet model. But, um, but we're all after the same thing. We're trying to organize visual data, get our head around the visual data, become owners of the visual data, Naively, just going out there and not having any plans from yesterday. These are fundamental to this way of thinking. Don't have any thinking going on from the last picture uh, or from anything we did yesterday. One of the funny stories, uh, one of my students laughs a lot about this. She introduced me to the story after I had, <laughs> she kept repeating the same thing. Oh, she would say, I would teach her something or show her something, and then she would try to apply it to the next thing that it didn't apply to. So she told me the wonderful story about um, Epaminondas. And I, I want to tell you it's an African tale. But this kid was sent out by his mother to get uh, uh, eggs. And, and he came back having played all the way there and back. But especially all the way back. And the eggs in his pocket were in his pockets. And they're all broken up. And his mom says, no, you dummy. That's <laughs> When it's egg with eggs, you put them under your hat or something, whatever it was she wanted him to do. Well, the next day, uh, she sent him out for butter. And he came back having put the butter under his hat. And the butter had melted all over his hair and everything. And so there was a different strategy, and she wanted him to get used to the idea, <laughs> that idea. And, uh, but it's, 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 it's our world, right? This, this thing that we're dealing with here has, when you're looking at, when you're looking at color, and when you're looking at shape, you're, you're looking in slightly different ways, but it's still the same thing, right? It's still this, the relational games. When you're looking at angle, angle play, right? You're looking to see where the play goes, right? I say play, you know, because the beauty is in the play. The beauty is in the relationships of things and how they dance. So if you're looking at, if you're trying to get in nature, if you're trying to get this angle right, well, look at this angle while you're looking at it, right? And to any other extent you see angles, notice how they play. And, and when you see delightful play in certain of these things, hey, this is very bent, this is less bent or bendy, this is almost straight. You know, these are things that you can notice about things in their interplay, right? But not exactly the same way, just the fact that they're an interplay, right? So, and yeah, so what we're really walking you through almost in a sense is if you're writing a, a composition and you're writing the part for the violins and the part for the drums and the part for whatever else you have, the horns, when you're doing those, when you're, when you're playing our game, that's actually what you're doing. You're watching these sets interplay. In, individuals, groups doing their thing and whatever they're supposed to be doing and that intersection that happens where the other things are also performing. So we're talking values, you're talking chromas, you're talking angles, you're talking proportions, and so on. Shape, you know. So, yeah, notice, notice the shape play between this and this right down here. Isn't that curious, you know? Now, I don't know if he meant to do it, but you begin to be our kind of thinker, right? We're not looking for objects. We couldn't care less about objects, although we could do care less because we're realists, just like everybody else, and we actually want to articulate with beauty the likeness of what's in front of us. What we're really nailing, what we're really driving ourselves through, what we're riding as a vehicle is these kinds of relationships. Say that this one here is bigger than that one, that, the, that it's, this is, it produces a softer effect, this is a more contrasty, harsher effect. These kinds of, there's no end to them. And you want to be ready and able and willing to do, every, to do all these sets. But the nice thing is it's only one game. You don't have to memorize the anatomy of, 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 of dragons on Chinese uh, whatever the, the heck that might be in the background. Or, you know, or what happens in costumes when they're patterning or their hats or the, or the anatomy of arms. I mean, you just don't want to do that. 
And and by the way, nothing. Don't 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 ever be ignorant about other things like anatomy. There's no reason to be ignorant about that. But but uh, beware that we are doing one thing, and you're going to get really really good at this one thing. And it is the setup. It's the beginning point for all ever everything else. If you want to really be good at imaginative painting, learn this first. So there's your primer on uh, on impressionist thinking and uh, use of eye. And <laughs> I hope that's helpful to you guys who are struggling to 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 manage all the content of the visual impression with authority because it lives somewhere right in there. That's what we do. So thank you again, Edward. It, um, good luck with, to all you guys who are exploring this. And I do hope you can, uh, I do hope you can, uh, as you work along here, you can, you can bring up questions for people, for other people who might be able to, uh, you know, gain from your, from your, your experience for your conversation. Ah, there's so much delight in the visual world. All right, well, thank you, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right.